Hello, I, it's, uh, it's, hello. Welcome back to the Emo Social Club podcast. I'm Brian. I'm Lizzie. Uh, this is probably our only episode that's going to go out before the Illinois election dates for the primary. So, uh, which is March 17th, March 17th. So we wanted to call that out at the top here to let you know that you should vote and you should register to vote. And we don't necessarily care who you vote for as long as you're not an idiot. Uh, so make sure that you are registered. Uh, you can go to vote save and, uh, register there. That's just one easy place to go. Depending on where you live, you can just go to that place and that will, uh, get you registered to vote and, uh, you know, do your research and, uh, do the work and, uh, spend the time. You can also early vote. You can get a, a ballot mailed to you if it's early enough in your state or you do that or whatever you want. So Yeah. Fucking go vote. Yeah. We have a guest on the podcast <laughs> today. Uh, <laughs> hi, Kieran. Welcome, hi. Welcome, Kieran, to the Emo Social Club podcast. Hello. It feels great. Uh, Kieran is, well, my personal trainer. <laughs> yes. But also uh, a personal trainer of some other friends of the pod. Uh, Kieran, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, I am... Kieran O'Donohue, and I am a personal trainer. Um, and the connection to uh, the emo social club is I'm also a drummer, and I've I've played in the Chicago music scene for at least over a decade now. Um, multiple bands, uh, and yeah, and that's why I'm here. And then I'm also well, I'm also your personal trainer. Right. So. And we talked about this, and then we were able to set it up. So that's yeah. a big reason why that's, I'm that's here. That's a big reason. That's, I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, scheduling is always really tough. Yes. You also don't live in the city, so. No, I don't. Always back no. and forth training people. I drive suburbs. everywhere. Yeah. Yes. Um, you train sleep on it. Correct. You yeah. Well, I train, I've trained Zach, Jake, and Luca. Teddy, I've never trained, but that's only because he is a god with his body. So Teddy doesn't need any training. Gotcha. Uh, have you seen that man smile? Uh, yes, I have. Yeah, yeah. it's ooh. You're that's not, looking, you're not looking at the rest of him. Yeah, I don't no. know what that means. <laughs> I don't know if that's a compliment at all. I don't know. I don't know how if you say that to people either. <laughs> I, Brian, I'm just saying. I mean, I haven't said it out loud before, but you know, we tried it here today. It might it stick. <laughs> could stick. Maybe yeah, could stick. You were like, hey, man, you know, I'm not looking at your body when you're smiling. Yeah. You're going to really agitate the, the stands out there of sleep on it. Maybe. No. <laughs> Pick yeah. your favorite sleep on it. Oh, God. It's going to become an alt press quiz. <laughs> oh, my God. It, I, I'm like kind of frustrated that it could. <laughs> like, that's an actual thing that could happen. Oh, 100%. It's frustrating. I can see it happening. Um, not if we beat it to the purse. No, we're not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's our one thing. It's like, That's our one oh, thing. dude, all press. We really beat you on this one sleep on it quiz. <laughs> Come at me, bro. <laughs> we get more hits on our site than ever before. <laughs> That'd be so stupid. Uh, your 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 whole thing has been to get the scene in shape. Correct. Yeah. So that's what I. It's one of the things when I started personal training, I made up get the scene in shape. Uh, one of my first clients was Jake from Sleep on It, and he still is. Um. And he's uh, helped me out a lot with Get the Scene in Shape, uh, giving me ideas and stuff like that. And he's become a a very close friend. And then when I started that, more and more musicians, uh, just from the local scene, um, started hitting me up. And then, I don't know, it it stuck. Also, every time when Jake and I would go work out, um, we would take a pop punk lyric and then like, make it a fitness parody um, to try to put a spin on it. And it hasn't stopped. Uh, <laughs> there's there's definitely days where it's like, I just give up because it's like, <laughs> what what lyric? It, you, I, I don't know. I feel like we've used almost yeah. every most popular song. 
there were some in there where I'm like, this is good. And there were some other ones where I'm like, this is a stretch. Yeah. It's still yeah, good, though. Yeah, you can actually, um, what's funny is when we first started training, literally the first five to ten minutes of our session was just on Facebook, and we were trying to make a pop punk status. <laughs> like, literally, that's, that's it. But yeah. yeah, so, and um, that as far as, I, I've been trying to, expand it as much as i can um which it'll get there i'm starting a clothing company soon um and basically the my t-shirts uh for the first run are gonna have a pop punk lyric on it that'll be a fitness parody and then i'll have get the scene in shape and then also i'll be releasing leggings um but it's it's just gonna have my logo on the ankle it's not gonna be some (laughs) over complicated thing like the 90s with Jinko jeans. Yeah. I swear oh, to God, no. those had like the most complex designs. <laughs> well, you don't want to get into the trip, ge- the trip, goth trip pants or anything. That, you know? Maybe. Uh, it's really going to depend on how much money I have. Cause I don't, <laughs> I don't, I'm also funding this completely by myself. Mm-hmm. So, um, we'll see maybe one day, uh, hopefully. And you know what? If the first run goes well, trip pants that's, that's the next step limited edition pull the grayscale move be like all right limited five yeah, yeah, oh yeah. My God. five and one in each size yeah i designed where the straps go <laughs> <laughs> hand hand strapped by yours truly i don't there like that <laughs> hand strapped god i'm coming up with sentences today i'm just yeah. you're just really... good one-liners yeah good good yeah. talk i do um <laughs> What's really like interesting to me, and one of the things I like like chatting with you about whenever we go uh, to work out is like that you literally were like, I want to start this business of being a personal trainer. It's all going to be me. I'm just going to like use some connections to people to like get more clients, and and you're kind of just running it all yourself, and it's it's inspiring because obviously a lot of people have like passions. They want to live their dream. They want to live like working every day. You know, they the 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 thought of saying like, Oh, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life, which I don't a hundred percent believe because you always are working, but, uh, you can still enjoy the thing you love and do the thing you do that you, that you love to do every single day. Uh, yeah, it, it's always inspired me when we talk about that. So you should tell, uh, tell other people what it's like starting your own personal fitness, <laughs> uh, business and really inspire the, <laughs> inspire the crowds. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, <laughs> Well, one, thank you. Uh, that was very kind. And two, um, okay, what it's like. Uh, it's. <laughs> I think people know that it's stressful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely stressful. Uh, so, I mean, the way it all happened was um, I used to work at Mario Tricosi, the hair salon place. Mm-hmm. Uh, I worked there for about four or five years. Um, I, I, was, I wasn't into, like, hair or salon or anything like that it, it was a corporate job took it got promoted it comfortable i was very comfortable um i myself i had lost over 100 pounds um i i was pretty much obese my entire life um and that's what when i and i did it all by myself no supplements no bs fat burning crap uh didn't have a trainer um first 50 pounds was at home and then the rest was at the gym. Um, so when I, when I really sat down and thought about it, um, I was like, I, I need to become a personal trainer. So anyways, back to Mario, I got fired. (laughs) Yeah. So that was, uh, (laughs) enjoyable. Uh, Why did you get fired? Uh, so I got promoted to, uh, procurement. So I handled like all the inventory mm-hmm. in the salons or the salon that I was at. And our boss at the time, he he tried to have a system where the retail products. So if you let's say you went in there and you bought hairspray, then therefore it would tell the warehouse for the next week. We need one more hairspray, et cetera. Kind of like a re- auto replenishment. Yeah. Um, and it didn't work that way. And then <laughs> the warehouse started running out of colors. Um it, it it was a mess. Uh, <laughs> so I got fired. Uh, other people with the same position of me got fired. And then I went to a knuckle puck show, ran into one of my old co-workers. 
<laughs> I found out my old boss got fired. Oh wow! And Ooh. yeah, they like cleared house. Yikes. Um. So yeah, that's yeah, that's Mario. <laughs> and um, then so I got certified. Um, and I started just helping. One of my first clients was somebody who used to be in a band in the Chicago scene the April year. His name is Tim. Um, this was around the time that Warp had the Warp Cruise. It was the first year okay. they started it. Yeah. So he hit me up. He knew that I had lost weight because he knew me when I was bigger. And his thing was him and his girlfriend were going on the Warp Cruise, and he wanted to propose to her. And so he, he wanted to lose weight. He wanted to feel confident. Um, so I just, I literally, I remember I wrote his plan up while I was working at Mario. Um, and he, what was it? I think he hit me up like two, three months later and he's like, I've lost 60 pounds and I, you know, and I, I saw the pictures and everything like that. And I was like, wow, I get, you know, it actually worked. So I kept on going, um, got certified. Jake was one of my first clients. Um, and then I had some other people and it just kept on growing. Um, so now I'm to the point where uh, I've trained. I tried to calculate it the other day. I've trained at least over 200 people wow. in two years um, through online coaching and in-person training. Mm -hmm. um, I have probably anywhere between like 40 to 50. I'm just estimating mm -hmm. uh, as far as active clients right now. Um, and it's... It's a lot of work. Um, it is stressful, especially the way I do it because I, I don't have a home gym mm. that I work for. So I travel to all my clients around Chicagoland. Um, so it's a lot of traffic. And it's uh, a lot. What The other morning when I went to train you, traffic yeah. was so bad. I We were like a half an hour late. I mean, yeah. Was, no, yeah. It, it was bad. It was like during uh, a snowstorm and shit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one lovely thing about... <laughs> living in Chicago land. Driving the highways at rush he'll, hour he'll come out for you in a snowstorm is what you're saying. Yes. To an the, extent. Don't to, hurt yourself. Yeah, yeah. To to an extent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I when I first started training, um I I did it multiple times. Um and it's more so it's not that I don't care enough to drive through a blizzard. It's more so if I crash my car <laughs> Or total my car, or something happens. I'm no good to my clients mm -hmm. if I can't get to them. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, and now we're here, uh, still, still working hard and uh, just trying my best. You know? <laughs> and yeah, everyone is. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, everyone's trying. Every yeah. every day, I'm trying my best. Yeah, I yeah I know. I <laughs> saw oh. your stairs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, your stairs itself is a is a workout. Listen. Uh, every day. You also have to make sure you don't trip and fall too. So yeah. it's like an added obstacle. Yeah. yeah. Every day is cardio. I'm <laughs> proud of you. <laughs> uh, speaking of specific workouts, what is a general like day of, or uh, uh, what is a general workout with you? Like if you're meeting up with somebody for a day, what does that what does that workout kind of look like? Um. It honestly it depends. Uh. It so for example with you. Um. So you are how tall are you? Six one. Six one. Um, so you are in you're pretty skinny. You might not feel skinny, but I, I but feel too, weighted. You're right. <laughs> the weight of the world is right. at all times pressing <laughs> right. down on my shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> and well, that actually that brings up a great point because working with you, somebody who's six one, um, you have naturally forward shoulders syndrome. Yeah. So if I'm so if I'm coming to you, right yeah. Now. If you're watching, if you're watching, you're watching the video, you, you're gonna watch me shift you. around and like. Um, <laughs> and then again, it doesn't really help because I'm like we're all like lean over a little bit. We're all like, we're all like, all right, well, you're on the yeah. podcast. This so is posh, the best hard hitting questions. Yeah, we're gonna get to the bottom of this. <laughs> so, <laughs> with you, with you, it's to uh, we do resistance training. Mm -hmm. I made you do cardio a couple times, but that was only to. One, um, get some cardiovascular training in there, and also yeah. just to put you through hell. Yeah, um, it was it was it was that one. You yeah, gotta sure. keep them humble. Oh good job, god. appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, and it's a rough day. Yeah, that. it was. Yeah, 
Uh, yeah, the one with Jake. Yeah. yeah, you guys were you were dying yeah. by that. I'll just do a sprint for a minute and a half. Yeah. It's like yeah. no, I can't, <laughs> no. no. I yeah, because I tried to make you guys go again, and both of you were like, "No, we're not running." And I was like, "All right, <laughs> all right, session's over." Uh, <laughs> Fine, go home, babies. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely resistance training, um, working on posture. Uh, definitely functional lifting. So like deadlift, squat, overhead press, um, things that have a lot of carryover in the real life. Um, and some isometric, uh, sorry, isometric training, um, and then fun time. So in fun time is body weight workouts for most people. Some people I will add weights in, or, mm. but those, those are for more, my like more advanced uh, clients not saying that you aren't special. Oh, I you, know that I am not we, advanced. Yeah. Well, we know he's special. Yeah, I am yeah. A special case. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but mostly things just to promote um your metabolism to get faster and stronger. Um, a lot of people, I think one of the mistakes that people make is they go to the gym, um, and they try to burn as most as much calories mm -hmm. as possible. Um, when the goal should be not to burn your most calories at the gym, it should be burning calories throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Um, because the fact of the matter is when you're at the gym, you're only there for an hour, you know, you're and on a, outside yes, of it, hopefully, <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Um, but outside of it, um, you're living, you're, you're doing your life. Um, and you know, this is this is one of the traps that people fall in just because cardio especially has been promoted over the past 40 years as the only way to lose weight mm -hmm. as far as exercise goes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, weightlifting and resistance training is getting more popular, um, but it's still nowhere uh, near where it should be. Mm -hmm. So... And we're gonna probably talk some shit on some stuff later. Ah, uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah. We're, and, oh, we're and Brian spicy knows. Takes out I, here. Oh no. Yeah, I. Um, <laughs> I, I try, I try to be as polite as possible. Uh, people who follow me on Instagram would say otherwise, uh, <laughs> or Facebook. Um, and also, I like to, I like to push the needle. Um, mm -hmm. because there's. It, it, the fitness industry in general, um, for the most part, I want to say like 80%, 90% of it is filled with absolute shit. Yeah. It's just it, terrible. Um, a good example is fitness entertainment, uh, which leads me to The Biggest Loser, um, which is a shit show. Mm -hmm. It is terrible. Literally, you, you are having people who are over three or 400 pounds. And I watched the first episode. They had them run a mile. Just right off the bat, <laughs> you, what, these people haven't exercised in years. Yeah. And you, you, right off the bat, you're going to be like, go run a mile. I feel like that's a huge health concern because a lot of those people obviously probably have like some type of heart condition or diabetes or, or something they, worse. Yes. Yeah. They, and they play into that. Um, so what, what really sells a show like the, uh, the Biggest Loser is the emotional connection. Mm -hmm. um, that's why people watched it back in the day. That's why... I'm sure people are watching it now. Um, they hit on the emotional connection. And it's just like we were talking about earlier mm -hmm. when we were talking about debating and politics and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, it's just like I said, you you connect emotion correctly to anything. Sorry, my Harry Potter potion just brewed. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, <laughs> you connect emotion to <laughs> uh, literally anything. You, you will be able to sell it. Um, Lane Norton... Uh, who is a nutritionist, uh, and he's pretty popular on the internet. He's, um, I think he's got a PhD. Uh, they interviewed him to be one of the coaches mm -hmm. uh, on The Biggest Loser. Um, and one of the questions that they asked him in the interview was, is it healthy for somebody to lose 100 pounds in 12 weeks? And he said no, and they never called him back. Wow. Yeah. It's just, and also, and you, you'll see this all the time. I, I the programming is wrong. If you, so for example, if I took you and I recorded, let's say we were able to somehow magically mm -hmm. rent out a house in the middle of a desert 
and we had our own gym there. What stuff you, like what that. What are you doing to me there? Well, <laughs> ch- I, I was going to say chances are we wouldn't be anywhere near healthy because <laughs> yeah. if, if there's a pool and booze, oh, yeah. and, you know. But, it's a party um, house in the desert. Yeah, yeah. So, so but, like a fear and loathing you, situation. Oh, no. This sounds like we were talking about my work. We're like, we're just going to move to Wyoming to a remote house. Everyone's going to live together. We're going to become YouTube reality stars and start a cult. Yeah. So that's kind of the same vein, I feel, a little bit. You know what? That's actually, I mean, I'm not going to lie. That's a promising idea. You, right? I, I guarantee you. Listen, we could have could a happen. nice-sized cult. Yes. <laughs> Everyone's equal. Yes. Exactly. Um, so... To get to my next point, the Please, yes, the go. KO Fitness Today cult experience. Um, so we, so if I if I took a camera and we worked out five days a week and and I recorded every session, we recorded everything of it. Um, the one thing it would not be is entertaining. Mm. It won it. I, if somebody, even one of our sessions now, I literally we walk in, we say some apathetic comment to each other. Uh, we talk about how traffic sucks, yeah. and then I make you lift. I don't make you lift fast. I don't make you li- try to push 300 pounds over your head when you are nowhere near ready for it. I am not. I would no, die. Yes, you would <laughs> die. Um, it's boring. It's uh, <laughs> And the reason why is because um, it's important. There's so many things with your body um, and issues that – can occur if you push it too fast, too hard, um, that it's just, it's not worth the health risk. Mm. Um, and a fun stat about the biggest loser, at least when Jillian Michaels was on it and whoever else, um, they, I think like 85% of the people that were on that show gained the weight back when they were off. And the reason being is because that's not their life. Yeah. You're, you're going, you're going back to your life. So with that being said, whatever relationship that you have with food, you did not change it in a month. You And it wasn't slow, it wasn't steady, and it wasn't efficient. And um, if 85 to 90% of the contestants that go on this show, the moment they leave the show, which that's another thing, <laughs> uh, gain the weight back, then it's not effective. Yeah, I get that it's entertaining, but these are real people with real lives, with real health conditions, and you are using them to gain money. And it's also just the messaging of like, hey, this is what you need to do. Yes. This can work for everybody. Look at how it worked for these people. And they're in the most extreme end of, of like weight, and they need to lose it really fast. It's like, yeah, you can do this too. That's not safe. <laughs> Correct. And, you know, uh, th- I watched another episode of it, and... The kicking off, they kick people off if they don't, they don't lose enough weight. <laughs> what? What are you doing? That's even more like psychological damage yeah. to people. Yes. Just like reinforcing probably all the negative things that they've ha- like have been told or like believe in themselves. And yeah. then I, it just probably just yeah. a domino effect. Correct. And here is so here's another thing as well. And this will this is more towards women than men, but when women are coming up on their menstrual cycle of the month, they tend to bloat. They tend, they tend to store more water weight, mm. which will make you heavier on a scale. And so, like, what? And I, I just, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, yeah, we want you to come onto the show. We're going to help you lose weight. We're going we're gonna to get you healthier. Uh, but you didn't drop two pounds yeah. this week. So get the fuck <laughs> off the show. Go the fuck home. Yeah. Go home. Yeah. You don't get it's it's I don't know. It not my thing. Not my thing. Not you know, um people and so that's why I question which don't get me wrong, those trainers on that show, Erica and uh Steve Cook, um, they are getting paid a good amount of money. And this is what I have to say about that, uh with me and supplements. Mm. I will never Support. I, I'll never be an ambassador, whatever that bullshit is, for a company, for a supplement company, mm. unless this. <laughs> not, not, oh, the, oh. So, and I've said this before on my Facebook. Mm. I was like, please know that if I ever start promoting a certain product, like protein powder, BCAAs, whatever bullshit product, I am getting paid. Yeah, I'm making 
great money, <laughs> and that is why I am pushing this product. Uh, being, being without a doubt, independent, you know, yes. you start to see these like nice paychecks yeah. coming in. You're like, yeah, Ugh. You're like right. maybe one scoop, one scoop of protein. Yeah, yeah, here. one uh, scoop of protein know. as a treat. And, yes, <laughs> as, as, a treat. as a treat. You just like grit your teeth. You're like posting something, like you're saying it on your your story. You're like, yeah, hi everyone. I really like this. This is a very oh, good supplement. I, no, I honestly, I I would straight up hold it up and I'd be like, hey. So I got paid ten thousand dollars to <laughs> show to you this, this product. Damn. So here's the product. Your boy is getting paid. You know. <laughs> Yo, click the link so I can get some more money. Yeah. Hit that We're link all in the in description this together. Down below. That's, yeah, that's another funny thing is uh, I remember somebody. Somebody questioned my integrity. I sold them. This is when I first, kind of first started trading. Um, I sold the plan for seventy bucks, um, which is n- nowhere near the price that it's at now. But um, like I said, it, it, it was like kind of right when I was first starting off, so um, it, it was definitely on the cheaper side. And they questioned my integrity because their friend said something to them, like just be careful because everybody wants to make a buck or. You know, people are doing this to get rich. And so what I will say this it, to anybody who wants to become a personal trainer for the right reasons, hopefully, and, you know, have a career in this and stuff like that. Um, if you want to make a lot of money and be a personal trainer, you need to find a new career now. Um, <laughs> if you like Fair. It, it's not I, I don't know what it is, but people think like trainers make mad money and stuff like that. And, but they don't. We don't. It it's um there's money in it in certain like yeah, like biggest loser, like fitness entertainment, there's a ton of money there. Mm-hmm. Um for training the everyday average person, absolutely not. So if you want to make money, go work with money. Go be a <laughs> financial advisor or something. Because personal training <laughs> not financial training. Yeah. Financial, financial advisor. training. Oh my god, that's my new thing. Financial <laughs> training. <laughs> All right, now lift this stack of hundreds. Yeah. <laughs> so, Lizzie. Yes, Brian. You know I like hot sauces. Yeah, as you know that I do as well. Yeah. You know we did that video uh, with Sue's Stare Hot Sauces. Of course. With our friend Kyle, the owner and proprietor of hot sauces. Yes. Of the Sue's Stare variety. <laughs> Uh, well, Soothsayer has uh, become a sponsor of this podcast through our collaborations with them. Uh, so we wanted to talk to you, our audience, a little bit about what we like about these Soothsayer hot sauces, which if you saw our YouTube video, you know that they all are awesome sauces. They taste really good. They are literally awesome sauce. It's awesome we're kick- sauce. We're kicking it back like it's 2010. <laughs> <laughs> like we're skateboarding and everything is awesome sauce. But they are, for real Z's, all natural, gluten-free, and allergen-free. Hell yeah. I don't have any of those problems, but somebody else might. Yeah, and, and you that's, know, that's important. It's hard to find gluten-free things nowadays without having to pay extra as well. Yeah, it can be a challenge. Uh, yeah, so Sue's there. It tastes good. It's good for you, I assume. I don't know. That might be a claim I'm making. Um, You know, it helps if it's hot enough. You can sweat it out, you know? Yeah. I really like the Omen. It's basically green sauce. It has some yeah. nice spice to it. It gets you sweating a little bit, but it's just enough yeah. to kick you in the overdrive a little bit. The Omen was really good when we had that. Uh, the lamp lighter is also a really good yes. one. It's strawberry and lavender hot sauce. It does still have spice, but it's also got a lot of like sweet flavors in there. I uh, love that. I add it to my bagel and cream cheese. And it tastes really good. Just fun tips for you if you're trying to spice fun, up fun, spicy your snacks tips. every day. We we were, we have some spicy takes and we give some spicy tips. And with uh, spring and summer coming along, Soothsayer does a lot of outdoor markets and festivals too, where you can buy more of their expansive product line, which is really rad. Mm-hmm. You can find that information on their website, SoothsayerHotSauce.com, or on any of their social media. Links are on the website. Now, I did want to get back because you said that you draw, you were basically like obese most of your life. And I get yes. that because I used to be like 150 pounds okay. up until I was like 14, 15. Mm-hmm. And so I know the struggle too. But what kind of was your like turning point of being like, I just need to, I just need to start doing this. Um, so I, 
so yeah, so I was obese all my life. Um, my so my mom died, and then I had to uh, move out to the suburbs. Um, but the year before I moved out to the suburbs of Chicago um, from Marengo, I lived at my house for a year, and I'm not I'm not joking. You, my best friends, can back me up on this. My diet was literally like four McDoubles a day and a two liter of Coke. Um, so I, I was just put in, yeah. put in pounds away. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I moved out to the suburbs. I had just gotten out of a terrible relationship. Um, I'd broken up with my girlfriend. And I remember it, it was like my first week in the suburbs. And I... Uh, Got out of the shower and I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, how do I ever plan on like being in another relationship or um, trying to like start a life out here looking like this and being this way? Um, And then I just went. I just started. Uh, Within two weeks, I lost 20 pounds, um, which was mostly water weight um, just from all the two liters of Coke (laughs) and uh, every other terrible thing that I was ingesting. Um, I uh, literally for the first six months, I just did body weight exercises at home. Um, I could barely do a push up, and now I can do a hundred in a row. Um, It was body weight exercises. Uh, My aunt has this bike from like the eighties, oh. like a mechanical bike. <laughs> and I shit you not. Like this thing is so old that the the seat is just like purple and it's like fluffy oh, and no. it looks like it's terrible. <laughs> but uh but I would ride on there. Um another way the resistance, turn up the resistance on it, it's a knob. It was a knob oh, I no. had to turn. So you really had to turn it up to eleven if yeah. you really needed to. Right, exactly. Yeah. And yeah, I I just I went hard. Um I didn't stop. Um, I The one unhealthy thing that I did do during that whole process was I weighed myself every morning, um, which do not do that. Uh, I don't. Just just don't. <laughs> um, one of my favorite things is, uh, especially with clients, people will they'll weigh themselves every week. So I asked for the weight in the beginning, but that's only to figure out macros and calorie intake, all that stuff. Um, and then what I will usually do is I'll tell them stop weighing themselves just because if they don't, if they don't lose a significant amount of weight in a week, two weeks, they get bummed. They feel Mm -hmm. like it's not progressing, et cetera, which I know that it is progressing. The the weight just isn't dropping. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and this just happened, uh, recently, one of my clients, Melissa, um, I had her stop weighing herself. Um, and she took a before picture and I said, okay, so we're, we're like a month and a half, two months in, uh, take a progress pic. And I mean, the difference is ginormous. Mm -hmm. It's, it's insane. Um, so back to, yeah, back to me losing weight. It, um, it just happened. Uh, I, I like, I think back and I was very objective with it. I, I was I'm going to do something active every single day. I am not going to stop. Um, I know it's possible, and uh, yeah, I just did it. It's yeah, cold turkey is that kind of yeah? No, no. Like- honestly, I did go. Yeah, I I haven't had a McDouble in eight years now, probably. Yeah, yeah. Something that I used to have like every single day. <laughs> I hate McDonald's, so I'd be like, you know, yeah, no, that's uh, yeah, that's okay. That. <laughs> yeah, um, I I know we've also mentioned like there's a lot of uh, like the emotional uh, attachment to food and like right. how it's like trying to break a lot of these like what is essentially an emotional connection to something, something you can control, something that makes you feel good. Yes, and like that that is part of the bigger picture where it's it's going to make it a lot harder if you want to have a real change because you have to change your mindset on what this means to you yeah. and then also take action and I'm like yeah that's that's probably the hardest thing to do for somebody just like I'm going to change my entire behavior I'm going to change the way I feel about things it's like Jesus Christ yeah I mean <laughs> well so like a, a good example is 
I mean, we're in the music scene, mm. and where are all of our shows that we go to played at? Bars. Uh, bars. <laughs> You know, I mean, like cheap beers, cheap beer (laughs) and shots. Uh, (laughs) My lord. Um, In the suburbs. (laughs) Oh, God. No. Uh, no. Um, (laughs) We said my lord, but the grossest thing was suburbs. Suburbs, Yeah. (laughs) Um, Very Chicago. Very Chicago thing to say. (laughs) Um, So what I was going to say is um, the next you could try it. Go to a show. And don't drink. Only have water. Yeah, right. It's it's weird. It's and, and it's not saying that every time. I have to do a, like a well being check on him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I yeah. so we worked out on Friday morning, right? And yes. I I was DJing at Iman LA that night, okay. and I get up to the green room, and all they ever have is like PBR and water bottles. And well, I'm of like course, I'm yeah. like all right, you know, make the right choice. So I grabbed a PBR and I went downstairs to do <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh and it God. didn't feel great. And then, uh, yeah, you know, just drinking a couple PBRs. I drank more gin and tonics that night, which I know is not better. I'm sorry. Can you reiterate what you call gin and tonics? I drank some GBs and some TVs. So, uh, some, some what? Some gin, <laughs> some gin Lee tins. Some Ginny with a tinnies. Oh, my God. Some Jeezies and some Teezies. That's an old man drink right there. It my is, father drinks that. It is a delight. They yeah. are delightful beverages. Yeah. They my, taste yeah. like... Pine trees and glory. My, I, okay, my I, I just want to let you know how old you are. You are seventy two years old. That my is father correct. is about to turn seventy two, and that is that is an that accurate is, representation yeah. of my human age, oh my <laughs> of both the way I feel internally and externally. And he has to say it in the fun way too to be hip with the kids. Of course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Your age children. is showing. <laughs> I'm good. And then he'll do a sick dab, and I'll be like, "Please don't do oh, that." Oh God! Oh, I know. Well, guys, it's been guys. <laughs> You see I'm what a, I've been dealing with for all these years? I'm a, yes. I'm a fantastic person to be around. Um, but you're right. And it's like uh, you're you have to be conscious of how everything that you put into your body is like going to. I would never argue like don't make the choice. It's just what is the choice you want to make? And if you're making that choice to drink a beer and to have those extra calories and like every choice kind of dominoes from there. And it's like knowing what you're going to have to do or like if you want this to be your goal and you want to achieve that goal in like a certain period of time, these are going to be things that are going to be hurdles along the way. Yes. Um, it, you know, people and I, I've had to rephrase this um, because I in, in the beginning, I would tell my clients like, yeah, you can have a drink. Like, obviously, don't go overboard. You know, like this is this the plan the plan for me as a coach is to show you how to live a healthy life without uh, and how it can still be enjoyable mm-hmm. because people have this thought that if you're, if you're going to get healthy, if, if you're going to lose weight then you have to have like this spinach every night and yeah. like just <laughs> terrible when it's not that way. Um, but what I've also found out recently is that uh, a lot of my clients like to go overboard with alcohol <laughs> on the weekend, uh, yeah. which I am, listen, I, I'm, I'm in no place to talk to tell someone how much they can drink mm-hmm. in their free time. Um, but I will also say, you know, if you do want to lose weight um, and you are serious about it, then I would highly suggest putting down I, I'm gonna hit a lot of people with this one good put down the claw okay <laughs> put the white claws down white claw is a hopeful sponsor yeah one day hopeful in this side I, probably not going oh, to are be, you kidding me hopeful. I would I would take there's a sponsor there's from other white ones claw. yeah they got <laughs> Listen, there's Bonnet, multitudes Bon and Viv is knocking at the door guys Listen, I like Bon <laughs> jump in on yeah. the ground floor as as I, I'm pretty sure you would accept any type of alcohol one. spot <sighs> Hundred. I mean, come on, you know. Even I would, and I'm a personal yeah, trainer. I will drink whatever you want me to drink on this podcast. Yeah, oh no, listen, uh, <laughs> water right now. Yeah, water. I'm proud of you. <laughs> but um, yeah, back to the relationship with food. You you have a relationship um, with some foods, and you probably don't even know it. Um, mm-hmm. One of my and uh, one of my favorite examples is to show a relationship with food, um, and also to show you how palpable. Uh, food is and what that means is uh, think of your five senses so what it looks like what it smells like uh, 
what you hear when you eat it, what you hear when you open it up, like a bag of chips, mm-hmm. um, how it feels, and how it tastes. Um, nobody eats popcorn unless they are watching a movie or they are at a movie theater. Mm-hmm. The first thing you smell when you walk into a movie theater is popcorn. And they have purposely done that because they want you to... Because you're at the movies. When's the last time you had popcorn? Uh, I don't know. Well, I'm at the movie theater. I'm going to go have some popcorn. Yeah. Another one, chips. Okay, here's something funny about chips. So one bag of chips, I don't know, we'll just call it regular size, is two and a half baked potatoes, I think. Um, <laughs> I, I'm literally, yeah, two like two, yeah, two <laughs> full, two and a half potatoes, okay? <laughs> Um, I so, want to open a bag of chips now and just find two and a half potatoes. So, <laughs> but, but, but what they do <laughs> is they, they cut it up, right? They, they process them. It's highly processed. Mm-hmm. And uh, they load it with salt. They make it really tasty. You know the way it feels. If I said, imagine eating a chip right now, you know exactly the sound it would make when you bite into it. You, knew, you know exactly how it would taste. You know exactly how it would look and how it would sound. Mm-hmm. Um, Try eating the next time you want a bag of chips. Try eating three baked potatoes, <laughs> oh my God. just raw, just literally three to or or bake them, whatever. But mm-hmm. three potatoes, just eat them because that you will not get through one. Okay, I promise you, you will. If you get through one, you will not get to three. I would I, love to do this as like a real example. Yes, <laughs> and like you will not eating it's, through three potatoes. Yeah. That's your next video. It's just you it accepting this honestly, challenge yeah, that yeah, no yeah, one gave to. you but yourself. No <laughs> words, just me eating potatoes and then slow tears falling out of my eyes. <laughs> yes. And Sarah comes in, your nice girl, from be like, "What are you doing? Like, What's fun? going on in there? Oh, uh, just you just <laughs> make me do it. <laughs> it's part of my fitness challenge. It's, it's part of a challenge. And other kids are doing it on the internet. Leave me alone." <laughs> I'm 72 years old. Where's my GG and TT? Oh, no. Whatever you called it. No. That's, that's the one now. Oh, yeah, oh, that wasn't it, was it? Some GGs and some TTs. Oh, I don't God. like any of these. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah, back to the relationship. Uh, you building a healthy relationship, and it's not, um, or, or it's like me bringing out a plate of cookies, um, and I'm like, do you want one? Uh, the difference between having a healthy relationship with food and an unhealthy relationship is uh, unhealthy relationships uh, of denying the cookie is, no, I can't. Mm-hmm. A healthy relationship is, no, I do not want. Mm-hmm. It's It runs deep. And, and you know, it's uh, I want you to try to think of your eating habits and your favorite foods to eat and what you eat. And then I want you to try to remember back to your childhood and what your parents ate and what your parents cooked for you and what it was like because I guarantee you they are somewhat similar. I eat a lot of ramen now. Okay, well, my that's never a, made me wrong. Yeah, I was about yeah. to say, I eat a lot of Asian food now. My parents used to be oh, like, God. all right, no one knows how to cook. We're going out to eat. <laughs> oh, yeah, all right. But, uh, well, okay, here's a good question. <laughs> how often would you say... Uh, that you go out to eat in or, general for like my life now. Yeah, yeah. Or, or was there ever a time in your life when you were like by yourself? You you would like go get fast food, or you would go s- somewhere where the food is quick, or or even like a, a sit down dinner. Um, I go out in general probably like two to four times a week, just because I work downtown all the time, so it's R- easier to do it. Exactly. But for okay. like fast food, it's like drastically yeah, cut yeah, down. Yeah. It's usually something more like. Nutritious. I, I got you. Think. Okay. I have lunches. I eat mm. Robin catered. GGs and TTs. I got just, just you know, my nightly Jesus and Teasels. Oh. Uh, right. my jazzles and jazzles and tassels. No. <laughs> uh, Tina and Tommy. I'm trying to find names. like the worst one that I can come up yeah. with. And that if anybody has any it. other words for gin and tonic that Brian oh. has not mentioned, yeah. just comment yeah. to comment. let us know. Comment below. Uh, I do think that I probably order out most nights of the week because it's usually just cooking for myself or making food for myself. And, okay. uh, so I would get something delivered or uh, stop at the Amazon Go store on my way home and maybe try to find something. What the hell that, is that? So it's like, 
Amazon bought Whole Foods, right? And yeah. then they op- started opening these like in person stores where you can just like walk in, you scan in on an app on your phone, you pick whatever you want up off the shelf, and then you just leave. You don't pay anybody. Like they track mm. all the motion that you do in there, and they take yeah everything I, off. Your I Amazon want you account. to keep in mind that also is palpability. Uh, yeah, because you walk out of there and you're like, where did all that money get spent on? Yeah, and like that is without yeah. anybody checking you to say this is how much money you are about to give mm-hmm. this business. You just fuck it i'll just buy whatever i'll put everything in my bag and go yeah another another good example is starbucks um starbucks uh they have i mean they have master coffee don't get me wrong i know people will go to duncan and stuff and i'm not just saying this because i work for starbucks but like i'll say it fuck you duncan people yeah all right thank you i appreciate that i'll fucking say it oh uh so (laughs) trash water (laughs) oh my Go You're getting on. really. So, I mean, when I worked at Starbucks, we were also very vehemently against Dunkin'. Yeah, I get yeah. it. Yeah, I, I also I work also at Starbucks, so we I all also, have that in common. But I also <laughs> don't get my thirty percent off anymore. That's so. true. Yeah, it's yeah. so they. But people, people go to Starbucks. Don't get me wrong for the drinks, but there's also it's it's the experience. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Starbucks. The reason why I say Starbucks is really palpable is because Starbucks created the third place so your first place is home your second place is work third place is starbucks they want to be your third place Mm -hmm. um and and they've done just that because can you make a cup of coffee at home absolutely and save what two bucks three bucks four bucks at least you can make a latte at home you can make and you can speak on behalf of me that Pretty much every drink that's made at Starbucks, you could go to the grocery store. Oh, one hundred percent, and even frappuccinos. Yeah, I eat my. I got like a frappuccino maker there one Christmas. Like, <laughs> and I, I didn't. I don't really drink sugary drinks to begin with, so mm-hmm. I just. I usually just put smoothies together anyway. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's insane. Uh, so yeah, Amazon Go is. Excuse me, I had a burp. Uh, <laughs> so uh, Amazon Go. Uh, definitely palpable, and you yeah. should be cooking your meals, so, Brian. I will also, add they have meal kits, so it's like you're buying groceries. But do you look at the like the back with all the ingredients Ooh, in it? Geez, that's good. Because even when I buy like basic things, I'll be like, I know it's cheaper, but how much sodium is in this? It's Correct, from because Whole Foods. <laughs> Excuse me. It, it, well, it's, it's, do we need to go shopping to Whole Foods? I mean, so probably, you can read the uh, labels. At Whole Foods, yes. What is the label Anywhere. of an asparagus? So, so, <laughs> so label asparagus. on this on this root vegetable. So that's so. Well, that's good. That's good. But if it comes in a package, yes. Ingredients. So, and, and a good way to read it is the first two to three things are usually what it consists of most, mm. and then the rest of it is just like random shit they yeah. put in it because it's processed, right? So and it's the like the reason why I uh, example go to Starbucks, um, get one of the lunch things or whatever, uh, e- even like a healthy sandwich or panini, whatever they try to market it as. Yeah. Check the sodium content. Yeah. And the reason why the sodium is so high is because it is traveling. Yeah. So it, it is processed to stay good until it gets to the store. Yeah. Well, I should say a couple of days after it gets <laughs> yeah, to the store. Yeah, and then some and then yeah. you're on your own. <laughs> yeah. I remember when, when I worked there, you know, you, you don't make a ton of money working at Starbucks. Yeah. Uh, I think that's fair and everybody knows that. So when all of the like sandwiches and all that were going expired, like they'd be like, oh, I got to get rid of all these. Like all of us would take them. Be like, yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. Even and then though that it wasn't like all of your right, meals. But- like, it's like, uh, you know, we got to throw these away, but it's like, yeah, I'm going to grab a couple of these because they're food. And also it saves me money because I don't make enough money and then to you, like, buy good And then you could also get crafty and mix and match the breakfast sandwiches. Uh, I do that all the time. Yeah. Oh, 100% yeah. I did that shit. I mean, 100%. I mean, even with, this was also bad though, um, because I always worked the night closing shift and somebody let me be in charge. Um, we would take the <laughs> cake pops or when they used to have the cheesecake brownie, yeah. throw it in a frappuccino. Oh, yeah. And then dump a heavy whipping cream oh, God. and blend it up. But like it was good, but it was only like every once in a while. You can't yeah. do that Keto. at Starbucks. You can't. They won't let you put food in there. So don't even try. Yeah. 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 Don't ask for it. Don't, yeah, ask, don't for ask for it because for it. you have to get I hope they yell I at you will too. say no. <laughs> I okay. hope they yell at you, too, because I yelled at people for yeah. asking it. But then I did it later. It's fine. I can do it. You can't do it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that you have a job there. Yeah. You have a, yeah. It's like your parents being like, I can do this, but you can't do this. Yeah. It's like, right. You know, it's fine. 
I'm I used wearing to, the apron. You're I used not. to do a bunch of that kind of dumb shit when I worked at Cold Stone too. It was like oh, way back in high Stone? school. Yeah. Ooh. Like I opened the one in Rosemont. Wow. Uh, Did hey they guy. take a photo of you? I was in high school. Opening? I needed I a job <laughs> and they were like, oh cool, we're opening one right over here. It's like great. Were that you sounds sick good. with like the little no. like ice cream thingies? You were like no, doing I was moves just, and stuff? I was just fine at it. And like it just wasn't, fine. It um, wasn't like super crowded. That's not up to Cold Stone standards. The cold zone in my town, they're on top of it. And they are in high school, maybe college. I was in high school. I worked two days a week with a couple of my friends and I didn't really give a shit. And every day I would make ice cream. Uh, I would make a shake, which was coffee, <laughs> ice cream and gummy bears. That sounds guys, like it hits though. I'm a big guys, gummy bears. It just seems like you've hits. been really good at nutrition your entire life. I have a very <laughs> confident uh, relationship with food, food, <laughs> and I like to drink my coffee feelings. That's okay. that's a five. That's fine. As long as and you acknowledge it. I was, you know, I was a grown boy. <laughs> I was a grown oh boy. I needed only, me gummies. What I were you only me, five what? foot nine? You want to go Irish on that? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It happens every now <laughs> I and then. I needed me gummies. <laughs> I needed me gummies in my tummies. Uh, right, GG's no. and TT's. No. Oh, got him. No. Uh, Everything is coming back to G and T. It always will. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, this was a long time ago. And obviously I was like, yeah, so I'm not at that point in my life anymore where my body's letting me get away with this shit. Right. Like, at a certain, you know, you, you go out and you're like 21 because, you know, you wait till you're of age to drink like I did. That's actually true. I actually didn't okay, drink until I was, I was 21. Say, like, you I'm look just like assuming, you're lying right now. No, no, no. It's just always one of those things where people are like, Haha, yeah, we all were underage drinking. And I'm like, I wasn't, you godless heathen. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking sinners. As you're over here I'm talking about Ginny's Hinnies, okay? Yeah. yeah. You yeah. waited until 21 to really fucking fall in love I, with alcohol. I waited until then, and then I just fucking hit the ground running, oh, just no. crushing okay. it. Uh, drinking fair. some UV blue. Oh, uh, oh, no. The ripe old age of 21. But, like, you know, you could at that time drink UV blue and, like, still, like, wake up and do things the next morning. Right. Because your body doesn't, like, collapse in on itself like it yeah. does now. So I think, like, with food, it was the same thing. It's like, yeah, I can kind of eat whatever I want because I just, like, come back because I'm, I don't know, tall. Well, and yeah, you're a tall, lanky and, dude. Yeah. yeah. So, like, your body's just like, yeah, we can process this, no problem. And then it gets older. It's like, hey, um, kind of sick about how you've been treating me for all these years, <laughs> kind of over it. And I'm going to show you as much as I can, how bad of a person you've been. <laughs> That's to me. amazing. So it's literally like an ex-girlfriend trying to get back at you. Internally. Yeah. Yeah. It's the revenge yeah. of the inside of my body. <laughs> it's a body horror movie every day. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm trying to get really dramatic, but it's like, nah, it's fine. Like, you I mean, just there, nice. there's a whole media study thing about body horror, but it's a completely yeah. different topic than yes. what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, at yeah. the same time, that's how it feels. Oh no, uh, I know. I'm not really that dramatic. I'm just like, you know, you, no, you, you are that dramatic. I am that dramatic, but it's for it's for the it's for the content. Uh, <laughs> I that's just okay. Know. I do shit like that. All I'm yeah. calling Sarah in right now. She already left. <laughs> She's not, she's not available for this. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just, you know, as you get older and like things start to change, that's when like I contacted you. Cause I'm like, okay, I've never been somebody who I, I've been to the gym. I used to work out in college and that, and then just like kind of fell out of it. Didn't really have an interest in it. Um, we can actually get into a little bit of a, a more shit talking thing. Cause I think this is important for the pod. Oh. Um, because I just didn't know how to do anything, I was like, I need someone to tell me what to do at all times. So I joined Orange Theory for mm. a while there. Uh, I did it for a few months, I think, um, because I was like, yeah, I'll just go to this class and it's right by my house and I can just go in. They tell me what to do. I just follow instructions and then I go home. Right. And I realized that, like, yeah, this still is, isn't super motivating me. Like, I need a little bit more of a one-on-one -on -one person telling me, hey, do this. Need hey, loving. this is specific for you. This is like not something that anybody can just walk in and you're just doing something. Um, and I know you've, you've said a lot of this on your Instagram, so I know that it's an interesting. <laughs> uh, you have a very interesting take on these classes, and I really like it because it's like exactly where my mindset was on like why I can't do these classes, why I'm like this isn't going to work for me. Okay. So uh, talk yeah. some shit, Kieran. All right. So... <laughs> So I, I was debating on whether or not to say this, uh, but I'll say it first now. Uh, group fitness should fucking die in a hole. <laughs> oh, big guys. Uh, so, and I'm not saying that there isn't any value 
to group fitness because there is. Um, and a good example is you. Mm-hmm. So you, when you, before you signed up for Orange Theory, you were like, you know what? I've noticed that uh, food is affecting me different. Um, I'm starting to put on maybe a little bit of weight, stuff like that. I need to work out. So what happens? You know, you, maybe you ask social media. Maybe, oh, sorry, I felt like I was going to burp. Um, <laughs> There we go. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, so you you asked social media, uh, and I'm sure that you saw Jake, because Jake mm-hmm. used to go to Orange Theory yep. as well. Um, and so, like I said, I'm not saying there isn't any value to it. It's what Orange Theory does uh, very well is a community-type uh, effort. It, it builds community. Um, because one thing that people have a fear of and this isn't just with fitness, it's with lots of other things in life, is going in alone. Mm -hmm. If you you were at a point where you could have just, you could have went to Planet Fitness, you could have went to Export, you could have went to any any gym, Mm -hmm. signed up, like, okay, I'm going to go in the gym, and I'm going to go work out, I'm going to lift weights. But you didn't. You were like, I'm going to need something where I feel motivated. Mm Mm-hmm to go to and that's what orange theory did Mm -hmm. you were there with other people you did a class you enjoyed it it was fast uh i remember it was either you or jake or maybe somebody else sent me an orange theory workout um that they did and it's all cardio based yeah um it's uh what is what do they call it cardio weightlifting that's one of my yeah uh, yeah (laughs) yeah yeah. so um (laughs) now here's so like I said, it does have value. And um, I know that the statement group fitness classes should die is a very bold one and controversial. Uh, but We're here for the takes, man. So. Yeah. So here we go. Thrive, okay. thrive in this controversy. All right. So <laughs> the reason why I say that, um, in a class, the we'll, we'll call it the detriments of classes, uh, and we'll we'll use orange theory just as an example. And I'll also use CrossFit and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, so with orange theory, here's the detriment. You have probably 30 people. How many people were usually in a class? I tried to go at the times when it would be less peak hours. Okay. Cause while I wanted to be around other people, I wanted to be around the least amount as possible. Right, so I'd right. say on an average class, it would be about maybe 15 to 20. Okay. Uh, weekends was a lot more crowded. Okay, so one of the exercises, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the exercises that I remember from uh, that workout was a dumbbell row, I think it was. Um, here's my thing. Uh, so you are a trainer. You have 15 people in this room, and now they're all doing dumbbell rows. Or maybe it was, was it like station-like? Like people would be doing that, and then five people would be doing yeah, something Yeah, so there. you're usually at like like – if it's 15 people, let's say they split it in half and half of them are doing treadmills while the other half is doing weightlifting. So, and what are they doing on the treadmill? Uh, running. Usually, yeah. Running. And then it's like kind of, uh, uh like interval interval. Okay. So got it. Got it. They're not just like running straight through for right. like, if it's an hour class, uh, you do about 30 minutes on the treadmill and then 30 minutes on weightlifting. So in that 30 minutes on the treadmill, they're like run, walk, jog, like going back and forth on it. Uh, and then the weightlifting part, you're at your own station. They have everything there, like set up whatever you need. And you just go through a routine of exercises over and over again. And they kind of switch them up after a few minutes of doing it. Okay. So you have, let's say seven people or eight people doing dumbbell rows. And then you have another eight people on the treadmills and they're doing hit running, hit cardio. So they're sprinting and then they're walking and then they're jogging and they're sprinting and whatever. Um, so let's say you have one or two trainers in there. How I, I know this for a fact, uh, because I did a fitness class once, I coached one. Mm-hmm. How are you able to check eight people at the same time to make sure that they are doing a dumbbell row, which is a staple exercise for mm-hmm. a back day, and with the right, right amount of weight, if it is done wrong, you will hurt yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, how are you able to check that? You're not. And if you say you are, that's absolute bullshit. Yeah. Uh, same with running. If it be different, if you had eight people walking, strictly just walking, completely different. Walking is not 
that strenuous of an exercise. You have people sprinting who probably, for example, before you went in, you never worked out since whatever college, yeah. right? So it's been a while. So your body doesn't move the way that it used to move. Right. Um, and you're going to have people sprint. That's an, that's another injury waiting to happen. Um, and I remember uh, everything's high pace, right? So everything's got to go. They mm -hmm. have you check your heart rate because you got to be in the fat burning zone. And yeah. you got to do all this stuff, right? Uh, which there's been multiple studies on that um, with heart burning zones. Or sorry, fat burning zones for the heart rate. Um, and it's, it's so intense that one, you could injure yourself and two what are you learning mm -hmm. you're not learning you go in there and you're like hey i'm here and then they're like all right we're gonna do this and then you're gonna do that and mm -hmm. then you're gonna do this and then you're gonna do that and then you're done have fun sweat bye um so you you don't learn anything atp is a thing so atp is the stored energy so for example when i make you do 10 bicep curls mm -hmm. and then you're done your body is recovering. That energy is coming back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Muscles. So, for example, uh, bicep muscle. When I'm doing a bicep curl, um, I am damaging it. Mm -hmm. Okay. My my bicep doesn't want to build. The muscle. Yeah, I know. Same. You're like, feel, yeah. I feel that. Like, I feel that every single day. <laughs> my bicep uh, is like, please don't stop. Yeah. Oh, no. um, I'm being damaged. And basically what you are telling the muscle when you are damaging it is... Hey, you need to become stronger mm. because the next time this happens, you need to be prepared, <laughs> right? So, and what happens? Thinking with that logically is like the I, next time this happens. Yeah, well, I know, and it is funny because when I say that and I say damaging, people are like, "What the fuck? Yeah. Like, why? Why do I want to damage my muscle?" Yeah. Um, so, uh, back to recovery. So, and that's where the recovery comes in, and that's where ATP is valuable. Um, if you do this high intense workout, here's another thing, hit training or hit cardio got proved. This is scientifically proved that it burns more calories than steady state cardio. That was found out back in early two thousands, I mm -hmm. think. Um, and what happens just like we do this in the fitness industry with everything that is something new is we abuse the shit out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, so everything's gotta be high intense. Every you know, next time, honestly, if you a uh, good weight loss tip, I want you every time, especially when summer comes around after dinner, go walk for 20 minutes. Just go walk. I guarantee you, you it will be more effective and you will lose more weight than any hit orange theory bullshit kind of class. Hmm. Um, so though, as far as orange theory, um, I get the community effect. Um, I get that it's motivating. But here's the thing. Motivation does not last forever. Happiness doesn't last forever. And sadness doesn't last forever. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to be healthy and how to improve your life with the challenges that come every single day. And that is what will make you succeed or will make you fail. Um, and then back to group fitness, CrossFit. Uh, CrossFit is fucking insane. Um, now, here, here's the thing. This is what I like about CrossFit. Because there are some, there's good to everything and there's bad to everything. What I like about CrossFit is CrossFit brought back certain exercises, certain compound movements um, that have been forgotten. And I will say this as well, brought a lot of women into weightlifting. Um, front squats were barely ever done, clean presses, uh, snatches, deadlift, uh, barbell, low squat, um, just so many different compound exercises that we'll call them the, the biggest bang for your buck. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I love that about CrossFit. Um, they also, one of their big reasons why they were so, so successful, because keep in mind, they came before Orange Theory, and now F forty five is coming up. They yeah. they got a lot of money last year, so you you'll be seeing those <laughs> pop up everywhere. Um, it's a community effect, and it's good. Mm -hmm. um, now the detriments, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you nobody should walk into a gym who has never front squatted, never clean and pressed, never snatched, never anything like that, 
and should be doing these exercises <laughs> right away. A, a clean and press uh, is such a complicated movement that the right way to learn it is you learn it with a broomstick. You don't learn it with a bar because it is, it is a very taxing exercise on your body. And the reason why, like I said, the exercises they pick, I love them. They're mm -hmm. great exercises. What I don't like is how they take average shows. Now, keep in mind, I know not all the boxes are like this. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know that some have great coaching and they're not one of those places that just like throw the average Joe or Jane in and then it's like, go do a clean and press with 150 pounds yeah. or whatever. Um, because if you do check statistics, the injury rate in CrossFit is very high. Mm -hmm. And um, But with that being said, uh, they, I lost my train of thought. Uh, they took compound exercises and brought it back into fitness, which was good. Uh, the bad part is that they do it all at high intensity. Mm -hmm. I remember I saw somebody's workout and it was like 66 deadlifts, 66 overhead presses, 66. And keep in mind, these are all weighted. And there's like eight exercises. And I, I messaged them. I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I was like, why, why in fucking God's name would you do 66 deadlifts in a row? <laughs> why? There's no, like, what is... No one's telling you to do this. It, it, but well, it's probably not, someone is telling you No, to yeah, do somebody it. is telling them that yeah, is the problem. Good. But why, how is this beneficial? Yeah. You are, when are you ever going to need to deadlift something 66 times in a row? You're not. Deadlift, a very functional, very... A uh, positive movement that has tons of carryover in everyday life because everybody bends over and picks something up from the ground and you're taking it and you're doing it 66 goddamn times in a row. <laughs> yeah, and it, which is just, it's mind blowing to me. I don't get it. Um, and their response was cardio with weights. And I said, that's great. But I, and what I told them, I was like, if form starts to slip, you literally need to stop right away. Yeah. Because you're, it's, and here's another thing as well. Uh, the reason why I say taxing to the body, and it's another thing that I don't like about CrossFit, is they do all these very taxing exercises very intensely um, and not a lot of recovery. Uh, you're going to pay for it when you get older. I want you to look at any quarterback. Joe Montana right now is a perfect example. I remember he was either at the Super Bowl or he was at some sports show. Um, and he walked up to the podium and you could see it. This guy, this guy was healthy, but he was a quarterback mm -hmm. and he got hit. He's, I don't know, 60 now or maybe 70. He looks terrible. <laughs> he, he talked terrible. He moved terrible. There's no fun. His, your bones and joints are, yeah. Take care of them because you're never going to stop needing them until the day you die. <laughs> my joints? Yes, your joints. And GGs and TPs. My, G my joints and my joints. <laughs> and, and your GGs and Js. My joints and my joints. And my joints and oh, my joints. No. Uh, but, anyways, yeah, so group fitness, um, it'll never, I know it'll never die, but it should. Um, <laughs> and th the reason why is so much more can get accomplished with one-on-one -on -one training than through a fitness class. And don't get me wrong, if you do Zumba or if you do uh, aerial fitness is now becoming a thing, um, or any sort of other dance or uh, whatever type of class, um, and it, if, if it entices you, then do it. Mm -hmm. The way I look at it is this, is if you want to get better at kickboxing, Go to go to a kickboxing gym. Mm -hmm. If you want to get better at Zumba, do Zumba. If you want to get better at aerial fitness, you need to go do aerial fitness. Yeah. Because uh, the reason why I bring this up is one of my buddies wanted to get better at football. For um, I forgot what. Maybe he was trying to join the team or something like that. He's like, I need a program to get better at football. And I was like, okay. I, I can definitely write you out something that'll make you probably a little bit quicker, maybe a little bit stronger, you know, and we can focus. But if you want to get better at football, you got to play football. Go play football. <laughs> yeah. It's like, there's no, don't get me wrong. Like lifting and exercise, um, it will help with whatever activity that you choose to do. 
Um, but if you want to get better at one certain thing, you need to do that certain thing. What you shouldn't do is go into one of these modalities of working out uh, of like class right? mm-hmm. with the idea that you are going to lose weight. Because one thing I will say about Orange Theory is this. I've seen the progress pics uh, that they post, everything like that. And people lose weight. But body composition-wise, it's not there. Gotcha. It's, it's just it's not there. Well, I didn't do great with it anyway, but I was also well, yeah, going yeah. going like I know, yeah. You know I like to talk weeks. shit, so you were like, oh, I'm gonna it. bring this shit up. But it, yeah, and I I was still doing it when we first started working yeah, out yeah, together. Oh yeah, 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 that's right. Because I was like, oh well, you know, obviously you as a one person training a number of people yeah. have a, only so many hours in the day. So I'm like, well, yeah, like if I can't make it to you, then I'll just make it over to Orange Theory. And then I moved farther away from it and it wasn't as convenient and the times didn't work out. And I'm like, yeah, yeah I just I, I can't do it anymore. Like it's, right. it's it's a lot of money to put into something if you aren't motivated, which everybody needs that kind of like uh, the thing that they're going to lose if they don't do it. And it was like, oh, I'm going to lose like money because I yeah. am not booking classes like it's going to cost a lot of money. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, well, I guess I'll just have to quit. <laughs> Yeah, it yeah. makes sense. So, uh, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, so, so you, uh, <laughs> all right. So, um, you can find me at on Instagram at ko fitness today. Uh, that's k o f i t n e s s t o d a y, um, and it's the same for Twitter. Um, on Facebook, I do have uh, K and M Fitness. It is a kind of like a YouTube project um, that my buddy and I. Have started. We are on YouTube. It's called K and M Fitness, um, where we I, I post like videos of explaining workouts, exercises, and then um, kind of just like crazy life stuff with Matt and I. <laughs> uh, Matt got banned from Tinder, so that's what the last episode was about. <laughs> um, and then I'm trying to think if I have any You're other doing TikTok social now media. too. Tick- oh god, oh, no. you're fucking around on TikTok. Yeah, I am. Yeah, so I uh, TikTok K and M Fitness. So K and as a Nancy. M as a Matt, and then fitness, F I T N E S S. So we're on TikTok. Yeah, I'm, I'm giving that a shot. Um, I will say this it is much better than Vine. It, I it, never used Vine. Oh, so. you didn't? Did yeah, you no, have? I wasn't a Vine no. kid. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's better organized. Like it's, hmm. it's very, so like in, in my opinion, Instagram um, kind of died when Facebook bought it. Um, yeah. But and, and not so died as in like it's not popular because it's still one of the most like downloaded apps. Yeah. But it more so the freedom that you had on it mm-hmm. and to be able to create um, TikTok. I think it was last year. I read a uh, statistic last year. TikTok was or two years ago. TikTok was the eighth most downloaded app, and then 2019 it was like second. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's going up, but yeah, I'm on there doing lip sync shit yeah. and uh, <laughs> showing me sitting on the toilet. And then with that being said, my OnlyFans. Is- <laughs> I, you might as well plug it. It's not for the yeah, OnlyFans normal yeah, content. It's- correct. Yeah. So I do have an OnlyFans. Uh, it's OnlyFans.com slash KO Fitness today. Uh, no, there's no porn on there. Um, <laughs> even though I promote it like uh, it's porn. I like. I there's a. Uh, video of fun time and all I did was put like booty 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 booty, booty <laughs> and like for the emotions on yeah. it um, but that was yeah it's not porn I'm sorry <laughs> it's uh, more like a Patreon yeah yeah yeah, it, yeah which I'll, I'll be creating a Patreon soon um, and that'll make more sense and then <laughs> I will also be launching my clothing company uh, which I think I'm going to call it KO uh, Collection um, either KO Collection or KO Apparel um, and the next step with that is I'm going to get my logo designed by, I don't, I don't know if you know her, Michaela Jane. I know she, yeah. we follow each other on, uh, Twitter. Yes. <laughs> she, there you go. Uh, so she's, she's going to be doing logo. She's done, uh, logo work for real friends and like against me. Um, I think she just got trio as well. Oh, um, oh. she is super talented. Yeah. Um, so She'll be doing the logo, and then after that, it's uh, it's game time. I got to put out stuff before summer comes, mm-hmm. and then um, see if it's gonna do well or fall <laughs> on its face. So that's that's the joy of making your own stuff. Big yeah. risk, yeah. 
Um, well, all right. I'm I'm glad we got to have you on today. I'm very about happy some to fun be here. Things. Yes. And uh, obviously, if you have any fitness related questions, hit yes. him up and hit me up. He will answer because that's something you do. That's a yeah. Lot, that's and it's really good, and it's that's what I do. Yeah, that's my job. So uh, yeah, thanks again. And from all of us here at the Emo Social Club podcast, uh, I'm Brian. I'm Lizzie. And uh, goodbye.